I'd like to thank all the people who sent me nice messages and people who've come to see me in the garden center uh, and who like my videos that I just yap. I was always good at yapping. Mm, the default position when I was young was adults to tell me to stop talking. But now I'm an adult, I can't say that anymore. Uh, um, this will, will keep coming back to this bed because I keep adding bits on. This was the stuff, they were just split a few weeks ago and put in those Virginias and they're doing really well. You can see, we're getting a lot of annual weeds. So everything is going to be barked um, in a while. But it's, I can get the feel for the place now, what it's going to look like. Um, there, was a, there was something we should have done on video, but we didn't. Oh, by the way, I'm a little bit very focused. Here we have geranium rosan. We have geranium rosan, and we have geranium rosan. One, two, two, three. And I spotted something slightly different. What's this here? I take a leaf, and there's not much difference, is it? Blotchy. Creeping buttercup. Ha ha, you thought you'd sneak away. <laughs> uh, I caught you. Um, anyway, creeping buttercup is a great plant in the right place. Now, uh, what happened here? You can see this really beautiful spark of the snow gum. And we had two very large berberus that came all the way out here. That's one here, and that's one there. And about a week ago, I decided uh, to take one or two branches, really branches that were going out too far, and I took one or two branches, another branch, another branch. I eventually cut the whole lot down. So they're going to be removed. Now there's techniques for putting little bits of stuff in them if you want to do that. So you don't have to remove them. But as a result, this has all opened up. We have an unusual Cuba japonic here that I didn't know we even had. And we were go I the the therapist the was coming as far as here. And I was gonna get I was gonna remove that catalpa. This is just was catalpa was cut back, and there's the trunk. And it's just grown very quickly to here and it's and now that it has space it's really good the catalpa is actually that's the uh not the catalpa the polonia i always mix the two up because they're big leaves polonia tomatosa it's the foxglove tree and um, it's sort of better in theory than in practice for the flowers the flowers are very high up and you often don't see them but it's used a lot it was used a lot in the olden days it was cut back hard every year every second year and you get really large leaves and get a very exotic feel you see the way that leaf is cut that was because we were taking out berbers and the berbers was prickly. But that's gonna stay now, and maybe not next year, but the year after, we cut it right back again and we keep it big and leafy. Uh, and it's funny, we also expose bamboos, this lovely bamboo, uh, the Phyllostasis vivax aureocaulis. And then I noticed we have a seedling which we don't really want. Because that's a very fine bamboo. The canes are really nice. Oh, the Budlia. Sort of a trick of the trade. I don't want the damage. 
Good luck, Persicaria. One. Now we take it out carefully. Now we'll have a look. You would never know there was a buddly, it had been a buddly there. Look at the lovely bamboo. And let's see. Let me take this one up. Because it's leaning too much. I don't think we need to do much more with that. Maybe this one. And that's really it. So, that's our little job that we, oh look, I nearly, I nearly damaged the catalpa. And we'll just have a look in here. You can see, well, do we need to put something? We added some, we added these in just today, these ferns, and this Libertia grandiflora, which is a lily like plant, but un unlike most lily like plants, it will do well in the shade, dry shade even. So a bit of grassy, a bit ferny, and the Majerski is here. And look at this that's the Talpa, or the Polonia trying to grow further out. But I think that's that. Except there's a little bit we can do around the back. Yeah, see through. You can see how well the bamboo looks. Never was never visible from this side before. Um we're going to plant this area up here. Even though I removed a lot of foliage from birch tree it's still very dark so one of my favorite new plants is tiarella pink skyrocket we're going to plant one two maybe maybe another one there you can't feed them there and We're going to plant something. There's a gap here. I'll just cut these back. The year the Nauteas. Problem with Nauteas at this time of the year, they can get a bit mildewy, but early, early to midsummer they are amazing. This is a Francoa. Little gap here. Reasonably sunny, and I haven't got Francoa anywhere. It's good foliage, very easy. Lots of bark. I don't want to disturb the bark. There we go. You see, if I, if I let the soil on top of the bark, to, um, it ruins the bark, bark doesn't work. Now, I'm going to finish off here. Look how that Sangasorb has collapsed. So what you do, if you notice as you remove some of the weight, it sort of comes up.
and if you do it in such a way, you see what's happened? It's, it's after falling on top of the Aster Manch. So, and in the books it says it doesn't do this. And you always cut just above the joint. You don't leave a stub. And always try and disguise your cuts so you don't want anyone to think you're cutting back. The thing that you don't do is get a hedge cutter and cut it across, you go into it. Look at that nice Achillea. Now, if Achilles are in a sunny enough spot and they're young, uh, not too old, they, they do get congested and they have to be lifted and split. And if you do take good chunks off them to the growing season up until the end of July, they will reflower. Achilles are good for that. Now that a bit better. Look at this, that's Melinia. That's a little seedling I found up growing in the gravel and I stuck it in. I thought it looked good. That's the purple moor grasses. Very good if you have any type of soil that's not, that doesn't dry out because they're native to Ireland. They, and they're native to bogs. They, very elegant. You can see, we're able to see the aster again, aster munch. It's not brilliant what I've done, but I, I, it's definitely better. And look at the amount of stuff I've got. Yeah, maybe this one here. That'll do. That should do. And I'll come back next week and maybe do a little bit more, but it's definitely improved. So don't be afraid. As an old gardener, long dead, said to me about plants, he says, when you cut a plant back hard, it'll either live or die. And if it lives, you're away. And if it dies, there's an opportunity to plant a new one. So never be afraid to cut stuff back. And the best month to cut anything back, as I say, in the beginning of September, the best, best month to cut anything back would be April, unless you live in the southern hemisphere.